5G, the fifth generation of ultra-fast cellular communication. Massive corporations claim that it will revolutionise the world. But online conspiracy theorists believe it could be used for pure evil. Anti-vaxxers claim 5G will be used to track and control people through secret microchips in the COVID vaccine. Others claim 5G may be the cause of COVID itself. Now they've taken to the streets, attacking cell phone towers across New Zealand. You send a message on 5G. Government doing new world order. What did these people know that I didn't? And what was wrong with their new world order? There was only one place to start. Adrian Morrison, one of New Zealand's leading conspiracy theorists and a flat earther who I interviewed two years ago. There's no curvature, that's what we're saying. A former musician who's now passionate about 5G. Should I be worried about 5G? The whole 5G thing is part of a wider plan, Guy. We get these towers put up, erected all across the world within a decade. Mm. Don't you think there's something strange about that? This is why people are getting more pissed off. It's just a crime against humanity. What's a crime against humanity? The COVID response that the governments have been implementing in their countries. Because in New Zealand it's been great, and then now we're all free of COVID and we're living the dream. No. COVID's a machine, Guy. Some new disease it comes in from where? From... Uh, from... Well, they thought it was transmitted from um, either like got to start somewhere, though. Bat bats or pigs is what they said. You haven't had the vaccine, have you, Guy? Haven't yet, no. No? I'm going to get it. I don't believe in the social distancing and masks, but if you take the vaccine and you come and visit me again, Guy, I'll have to use them because I don't know what you're spreading. Wait, so you don't believe in masks, but if I have the vaccine, then you will wear a mask? I might have to because because you that might be carrying and spreading logic. something, Guy. But so know? here's the hard thing. You are worried about me making fun of you in this interview, but when you say stuff like that, it's naturally... Hilarious. I <laughs> know, but. But that's gold. I know. That's what we call that's in the, the industry kind of thing solid gold. Show, I can't though, not use that. Yeah. Yeah, like that's the kind of thing, and I'm cool with that. So I'm like a gold miner. I go out into the mine and I mine for gold. You're so a you very rich seam of gold. So you just take all those really good gold. bits, you know, yeah. that make me look cool too, as well as you. Because we'll you can't be cool the together. one that looks cool and I look like the dickhead. Okay, so if you're saying the government have got to an answer, but you'd assume that they respond to like experts and they have experts. It has been the World Health Organization. Yeah, that's the global body to fight pandemics, that makes sense. They say they're the World Health Organization, but they're acting like they're not. They, they don't seem to know anything about the Nuremberg Code. What's the Nuremberg Code? Well, that was a charter that was put together after World War II, mainly to do with the mad doctors, you would probably call them now. I mean, they were doing things like trying to put one dog head onto another, and they were trying all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Putting one Cloning dog head onto another? Yeah, you can look back on this unclassified information now. But and they their big experiment other... was trying to put a dog head onto so another dog. So these people were actually doing... <laughs> are you getting two dogs and switching their heads? Yes. Or are you putting one dog head on top of another head so the dog has yeah. two heads? You're, you're putting a different dog head onto another dog. So it was there was a dog head and they put another dog head on top of the dog head. So the dog has two heads, like a no, double, they, like a giraffe no, no, neck they, head they of another dog. No, they cut the head of the dog off. Fuck. And they put another dog head on the top. Wow. But they did succeed. In fact, these people, they, they made these children into what they call super soldiers. I'm sorry, that makes me laugh. Okay, listen, because the military people, they get married and they have children and they put their children forward for like assessments and things. Yeah, and they then want to the find the psychic ones. ones the psychic the ones? Yes. No. They want to find. No. I'm not accepting that. Adrian, I'm sorry, I'm not accepting that. The well, psychic it, ones. No. You're, you're thinking yes. of the X Men. Being psychic isn't real, that's not a thing. Well, it depends on your meaning of psychic, guy. Because not everybody researches for hours a day like I do and looks at everything. There's people in society that want me dead. I, 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 <laughs> you know, just the alternative thought is, is just doesn't seem to fit with society anymore. We've got to believe what the government says. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That was, fu that was funny. <laughs> Being a conspiracy theorist must be exhausting. It is exhausting, but you have to learn to live with it. Do you not wish you'd followed your true passion, you know, of music? When I was a kid, my mum yeah. forced me against my will to play piano. Well, you know, that was a good thing in a way, though. Yeah. Wasn't it? Well, my theory is my mum just really liked the piano teacher. Really? Yeah. The music and the passion is, is all still potentially there. It's still but something you, I want to do. But why don't you I just forget lost about... my confidence, Guy. I lost my confidence. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it but was maybe after you can that, get that flat confidence earth inside. Inside. Oh, my episode killed your confidence. Yeah. You know, people calling me a crazy nutter on YouTube and all the comments and stuff. Yeah, like, even fuck. going so far as to say that I actually should be terminated. Can I just say, first of all, 
I came to interview you as a flat earther, thinking yes. it would be funny and interesting. While I think your flat earth ideas are ridiculous, if that caused you pain and harm, I am genuinely sorry about that, because that, I I'm so sorry. You're a polity guy, and I just hope you don't do the same thing again this time. <laughs> Fuck because <laughs> we're, we're I'll, I'll come and burn this fucking studio down. <laughs> we, <laughs> Adrian, we're, um, we're setting up don't, for round two, aren't we? Don't provoke a conspiracy theorist, we're, hey? <laughs> don't even joke about that. How does 5G connect to all this big picture, the World Health Organization and COVID? How does it connect? Well, I don't know all the technicalities, but I do know that there's a lot of people that do know about it. You know, even God says to seek the counsel of many so that you know that the true word is with you. Mm. So do you know what those towers are going to do? Why don't you know? Don't you think you should? You go and research, Guy, because that's the wisdom and the advice that I'm giving you. Coming through. Coming through. Coming through to me. Your mission is very important to find out the truth about these things. Down in Nelson. Nelson's the place to go. I had to do right by Adrian and learn the truth about 5G. I was headed to the epicentre of New Zealand's anti-5G movement. Nelson, my hometown full of fond memories. The house where I grew up, the school where I went to school, and the church where I lost my virginity. Nelson is home to a staunch anti-5G movement led by a mystical man named Joe Rafici. Rafici was coincidentally my piano teacher when I was 12 years old. There's actually a bit of a personal connection here. About 15 years ago, mm -hmm. you actually used to teach me voice and piano lessons. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> 15 years ago, you probably looked a bit different and so did I. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Just so you know, the room isn't really smoky, it's blurred. You know when someone doesn't want to be on a TV show and their face is blurred? This entire room didn't want to be on our TV show. I once was blind, but now can see. So what specifically is the problem with 5G? This technology is a violation of human rights. All electromagnetic radiation affects biological organisms, and it's just part of a toxic overload for the organism. Did phone go off? Seriously, in the 5G interview? Matt, was that yours? Yeah, sorry. Get out, get the fuck out. I don't even know what you do on the show anyway. What's your role? I direct. You're the director? Yeah. I'm the director now. Get the fuck out. This is an issue that affects all New Zealanders. This technology will enable total surveillance and total control of everything citizens do. Fuck, that's, that's scary. Certainly not for the benefit of humanity. So I need to learn more about this. How can I do more research? Now, if, if you were to go out to Golden Bay, there are people out there who are very much into this issue and be very good to speak to. Joe sent me west over the infamous Takaki Hill to a place they call Tarkika. Our leading exporter of crystal. You look like a bit of a twat, if I'm honest. There's a load of shops down the road. Just grab something like this, you know, relax. I must say, I'd probably kill myself before I grabbed something like that. That is horrific. Well, this, this. How has your hoodie got dreads? So this. <laughs> and when I bought up 5G, only one name came to mind. A guy called Nanga. Go meet Nang. Yeah, Nangas. You should go and visit him. Nanga. A mysterious Golden Bay legend. An eccentric genius well known for his amazing portraits and paintings. And being publicly opposed to the COVID vaccine and 5G. In what was surely a sign, he was hosting a Love Vibration Festival that very day. I feel like I'm getting a sign here. Uh, what's the sign? I should come to the Love Vibrations Healing Festival. Certainly, yes. I hope you'll be grooving. I'll be grooving, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be I'll, grooving. I'll be grooving. I'll be grooving. Yeah, I'll be definitely grooving. I'll be grooving more than you. You'll have to do some serious grooving. <laughs> man, I'm gonna be doing so much more grooving than you. Well, let's groove together and make it more of a groove. Let's have a groove off. No, 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 let's have a groove on. Let's have a groove on. Yeah. Oh, Alan, I love it, mate. I love your groove, <laughs> bro. With the promise of a groove on, I had to get a move on. Something magic was happening. I didn't know what it was. All I knew is that I had to find the man they call Nanga. I'm, lo I'm looking for Nanga. Oh yeah, he's there. Hey, guy, I'm over here. There you go. Nanga. 
Good to meet you, Nanga. Yeah, good. I've been looking for you for a long time. Yeah, I've stopped looking. Nanga welcomed me with open arms. He explained that the Love Vibration Festival was all about spreading laughter. We know laughter is the best medicine, but you know our aim is every day, every person we meet is to make them smile, mm. laugh, or giggle. Yeah. La laughter's not necessarily the best medicine though, eh? I recently did a gig in a children's hospital and right. most of those kids died. From laughing? No, from uh, late stage cancer. Well, that's where you needed to go to the giggling. And the festival had it all. Love. Nice. Grooving. Ishi wishi wan, ja, ja. And a five dimensional spirit portal he uses to communicate with dead musicians. There was one day when I just finished building it, John Lennon came through to me. And then uh, this was Elvis Presley, and this here was Michael Jackson. Isn't Michael Jackson like a sex fender? No, 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 not at all. He loved the children. He loved the children, all yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't tell if Nanga was crazy or a genius. Either way, he was one of the most interesting people I'd ever met. And my best chance at finding out the truth about 5G. How's that? It's bloody beautiful, mate. Thank you. How'd you get the name Nanga? Well, let's go back in 1988. Uh, I was in an Aboriginal mission. I uh, met up with this elder and he says, uh, your name. Nanga, 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 it's a sound. And nanga. Nanga, that's it. Nanga. Yeah, that's it. Nanga. Ah, nanga. I'm in the process right now of fine tuning my whole body to be a didgeridoo. That's fucking good. That's really good stuff. So 5G. It's a big problem. Yes, on, on what it's setting up. You plug, you get in plugged in, really. 5G puts you into the network. And they can, and 6G, zoop. So what does zoop mean? You just zap you out, yeah. That's fucked. Yeah. What are you most afraid about about 5G? Well, I'm not personally afraid of anything, and not even that 5G. I have a kind of built-in filter through my mind. I, I never get colds and flus. So you never get sick? I had a flu once just to experience it. See what all the fuss was about, see what all everyone was raging pretty about. Pretty well, yeah. When I died, I went through 24 dimensions. You died? Well, clinically for three hours. Um, I took an overdose of all these antipsychotic-type drugs. I'm about probably a second away from my whole heart was going to burn out. So what I do, I've done it on nearly, nearly everything. No. I, in my mind, I declare no. 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 So I go straight upstairs and I left the body hovering up and down there, hovered up through the ceiling. When I went up to what they call a light, it's a bit more than a light. A lot of people get to that stage, they say they meet Christ. Did you meet Christ? Yeah. How was he? Happy and smiling and laughing and giggling. He, he has great humour. People have near-death experience. I've had much more than 20 of those. But I've never caused an accident in, in my life. I've done a few flips. In a car? <laughs> it's a car. How'd you end up doing that? On top of Tokyo Hill. Uh, instead of stopping and having a pound out, by the pound out and stopped. <laughs> 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 okay, so you're driving along the Tokyo Hill and you fell asleep. I could feel myself being projected out and then, yeah, it would have been pretty messy. So you said no? Yeah, firm no. No! Did you go out there and high five Jesus? Oh, uh, I didn't need to then. Why don't you see 5G and say no? I did. I said, bugger that, I've had enough of this. So I just said, no! Needly. This is far out, bro. I can go a lot further than just far out. We go right to the other side. I don't even know why I'm doing this fucking story or being a fucking journalist. You know, like 5G's happening and a lot of people are very concerned about it. I but... wouldn't worry about your 5G. Forget about it, it's got no future. Just more focus on your inner divinity, your divine self. And you're in, then you're into the 5D plus, not 5G. Fifth dimensional being is love. So a key turning point for you was when you tried to uh, com sui. I had a pure Kundalini experience, awakening. Way back in 76, waking up the rainbow serpent. Is the rainbow serpent a euphemism for your penis? Yeah. <laughs> Is it actually? Yeah, I, I wasn't. That's the best name for a well, penis I've ever heard. Can you name my penis? The Woggle. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. The Woggle, the Rainbow Serpent. So woggle. you're the Rainbow Serpent and I have to be the Woggle. Oh, yeah, I, I feel like woggle. woggle isn't as cool a name as Rainbow Serpent. No. Nanga was one of the weirdest people I'd ever met. And I loved every minute of it. He'd seemingly managed to have escaped the troubles of everyday mortals by devoting his life to the power of love and the beauty of art. So that painting has got 
one, two, three, four, five men in it. We start off with Zeus. Zeus has got a stiffy. Yeah, because he's been dominant. And then who's the final character? That's the modern man represented by myself. That's literally you? Yeah, I didn't have any models at the time, so I used myself. You've got a, a lovely big penis. <laughs> Is that accurate, or do you add a little bit? Yeah, of... yeah, I'm, I'm uncircumcised. Thanks, Mum, for that. <laughs> what I love out here is it's just fucking loose as a goose, eh? Yeah, exactly. I used to say, let loose like a wild goose. Somehow 5G just wasn't important anymore. All that mattered was becoming my true divine self and reaching the 24th dimension. To do that, I had to walk the Rainbow Serpent to the garage that housed the Egyptian Chamber, where I was introduced to a man known only as Glenn. Glenn. A successful businessman turned spiritual guide. Nice to meet you, friend. What would you like to know about it? Um, well, mainly my first question is, um, what the fuck is it? It's still experimental. We do not know its full secrets. Humanity cannot build a great pyramid. It is too far beyond us. Even with all our lasers and our technology, we can't do it. We it can't be done. We can't even build a pyramid with our lasers? No. So, so this is going to change me? could do. So we start with closing your eyes, and in a sense, you are an instrument. You're, you're not different to a flute. And as you set up your vibration in that way... I'm a bit different to a flute. Yeah. Maybe Didge is more your vibration. Is did short for didgeridoo? Yes. Are you saying didgeridoo so much in your life that you need to abbreviate it? Yeah. Do you have a job? Yes. What do you do? This. This is a full-time job? It's part-time. What, what do you spend the other part doing? I am working in the crypto world. At the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I and a bit of part-time ditch? Yes. With Glenn, there was no doubt that I was getting an authentic experience. But by stepping into this ancient Egyptian ritual, I was stepping into a world of mysterious forces and powerful magic. Transform. With the transformation into my divine self complete, I was ready to begin my journey to the 24th dimension. Cheers, Glenn. With Nanga by my side, we transcended from the physical. The leaf wouldn't grow. The, the sand, sand wouldn't, wouldn't roll, roll over. To the metaphysical. Faster than the speed of love. Clean. Amazing. I hope you'll be good. I had a pure Kundalini experience to awaken the Rainbow Serpent and ride to the 24th dimension. Finally, the Rainbow Serpent and the Woggle were truly free. I returned from Takaka a different person. Nanga forced me to look deep into my own soul, and it was dark. I wasn't trying to find the truth. I just wanted to find some weirdos to exploit on television for money. That's fucked up. But what Nanga taught me was love. I'd hurt Adrian, and it was time to make things right. I want you to be a singer. I reckon you should just get rid of this conspiracy stuff and just focus on music. What about if I became a conspiracy singer? That's a terrible idea. There's a market for a new breed of singers. <laughs> There's the conspiracy music guru on YouTube. You should see him. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get him Don't another time. Don't believe in gravity. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite what I had in mind, but I'd rekindled Adrian's passion for music. Now it was time to rekindle mine. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that Now, 
I never did learn much about 5G. But I do support Joe Rafici's concerns about increased spying by corporations and governments. And Adrian was right. In 1959, a Russian scientist did attach a dog's head onto another dog's head. It didn't look as funny as I thought. Luckily, no animals were harmed in the procedure. Except for both the dogs. They died after 23 days. Most importantly, I learned about the power of love. Because with that inside of me, I'll be grooving from now until forever. Guy Williams, New Zealand Today.